In this video, we're going to show you all how to be more consistent in the red zone about 5 to 10 yards out. I know it could get a little difficult because zones shrink, less room to run around. Um, I'm going to be showing you my scheme out of gun bunch tight end, but you can do this with any formation that has three wide receivers to one side. So, for example, gun bunch tight end is going to be one of them. Uh, bunch Y flex is going to be one of them. Trips tight end. So, again, just anything. Uh, you can do it out of any empty set like this one has three wide receivers to one side. Trey Y flex. Uh, my next go-to is going to be the gun box. I know y'all probably seen me run this a few times in the red zone um, out of gun box. That's definitely my second favorite when it comes to uh, running this little scheme we got going on. So again, you can run what we're doing with this in almost any trip setup, anything that has three wide receivers to one side. So let's talk about my audibles out of the, guns, the gun bunch tight end. The main play is going to be spacing. Uh, whatever formation you're in, make sure you have the best run play available. If it's an RPO, 100% over, make sure you add that RPO. They're way better than just any regular run play. Uh, we're going to have mash in there. This play doesn't get used as much. It's honestly either spacing or it's going to be my screen or the RPO. Uh, but these are going to be my four plays when I'm in the red zone. So we're going to jump to the practice field and show you how we run this little scheme when we're about 5 to 10 yards away from that end zone. All right, so whenever I'm running a scheme, I usually like to come out in my run play first, and then I'll audible there depending on what the defense is looking like. So in this case, it's going to be the RPO alert bubble. Um, if they give me a good look, I'm just going to take the run as is. But I do like to set up my RPO the same way we're going to set up spacing and also the same way we're going to set up the HB slip screen. So like, let's say we're successful with the RPO the first time. We uh, get back into this position again. We're going to set it up, make them think we're running the RPO, but then it ends up being the spacing or um, the HB screen. And that's kind of how you start scheming out of a, a formation like that. So let me go ahead and show you how I like to set up my uh, gun bunch tight end when we're out here. Uh, I always motion the outside guy. And you're going to see when we're, on the, when we're in the RPO, it's going to turn him into like a little hitch route. From there, I like to smart route it just to push it back a little bit further. Now, we're probably never going to throw to that guy, but I think that him running that route backs up that cornerback better than him blocking. It's like a for sure he's going to kind of get him out the picture. So then we only have to worry about the user if he's one of the middle linebackers, which is normally going to be this guy right here. But sometimes it could be this guy. So the next guy we're going to have to watch is going to be this guy that I have the mic um, icon over. Uh, and then if I am going to run the RPO, I'm going to double team the inside D tackle that's closest to where I'm going to be running to. So it'll be this guy. Um, and it is just your job to watch the user. If they attack the run, we're going to go for the bubble. If they attack the bubble, we're going to go for the run. Um, and every time I see this big gap right here, I'm always taking the run 100%. Um, again, if the linebacker comes and fills up the hole, though, then we're going to hit the bubble. You're not going to get the full effect of the user because we are in practice. The linebacker is going to kind of just settle down right there. But I'll show you what it looks like. And another thing, Jurtle. Jurtle is going to be your best friend when you're about this far away from the end zone. Um, if you don't know how to do that, you just hit Y and change the direction with the left stick. It's the best juke move against uh, the computer, especially like when you're running towards the sideline and you want to cut upfield. I'll show you what it looks like. So you're going to run like this and then you just cut upfield like like that and you see the computer completely misses me so you can see right there we actually took the run um, but just to show you what the RPO bubble actually looks like where we throw it to the bubble um, that's just something you're gonna have to read though if you're you know let's say for whatever reason they completely are shutting down the run just go ahead and hit the bubble out like this and see how the cornerback got just drug back about five to ten yards because we ran that hitch route I think it works better than them blocking so that's why I run it like that so let's go ahead and talk about the play spacing. This is honestly probably the number one play that I run in the red zone. And this is my concept that I call a double out. So again, we're going to motion out the outside wide receiver. We're going to put him on a zig. We're going to put the inside wide receiver B on a zig. Leave Y on his route. Put the running back on a hitch route. And then put the tight end on an out route. This is my double out concept with my two zig routes. Um, those are the two that we're mainly going to be going to. So let's talk about the outside zig route real quick. If your opponent does not guess pass, the zig route on the outside is going to be open 100% of the time. Let me show you what this looks like. Once he makes that cut, you're going to just lead this ball all the way out like this. Um, sometimes you will have to lead it up, but for the most part, just lead it all the way towards the sideline. It is a scary throw sometimes, but I promise you it'll be there almost every time if not every time um but the go-to is definitely the inside zig route so let me show you what this looks like real quick oh hold on. we didn't even audible the spacing but again we are making it look the same as if we're running the rpo uh let's go ahead and get this set up real quick now 
again, we're not going to get the full effect of the user, but it's going to be one of the middle linebackers. Not a lot of people use the safety like me, um, but it's most likely going to be one of these two guys. This time, I'm not going to throw the ball. I just want to watch uh, how wide and the running back settle down. Let's just watch that. And let's say they're one of the users right there. If they don't stay there in that position, like let's say they go help try to stop the inside zig route, the running back or Y is going to be wide open. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the play again. Let me go ahead and audible the spacing, motion the outside wide receiver, double zigs, uh, running back on a curl. Now you can do different things with the tight end. You can actually leave him on the route that he's on, but I don't want him to get too close to the running back. So, I mean, I either put him on an out route or I'll put him on a, a flat route. If you do got tight end apprentice, but I mean, by all means, you can do a trail route. You can do all kinds of things, but not everybody has tight end apprentice or hot, uh, hot route master. So we're going to just leave him on some type of outside route. Um, again, the, the go-to is going to be the inside zig route. If they, uh, if they're not guessing pass and, you know, you can see that that uh, curl rod is kind of just like settling down, not really running straight out there to the outside zig, we're going to the outside zig, which we can right here. Um, if they guess pass 100%, you're going to the inside zig. And he's going to be open in his little pocket right here once he makes that cut every single time. And if that user is playing it, then you got the little settle down hitch route right there, basically where uh, the user starts off. Um, and then from there, I also like to mix in the HB slip screen. Again, we're going to make everything look the same. We're going to motion out the outside wide receiver. Um, only recommend to do the screen if they're in zone coverage. If they're in man coverage, sometimes they can play the screen pretty good. Um, and usually whoever's guarding the running back is going to be the user. Uh, and sometimes you can't catch them off guard even if they're in man coverage. But this is something I just like to add into the mix. Uh, and, you know, you have to pray that the screen is going to go your way because sometimes the blocking could just be kind of iffy. Like right there, I couldn't like get out as quick as I wanted to. But that is something to like to throw in. But for the most part, the OP play right here is going to be the spacing. This is going to be the bread and butter. You can set this concept up with, you know, any um, formation. Like, OK, let's say you don't have the little... Um, route by y you can still do like an in route like this you can do a slant route his job is basically to clear the user in the middle of the field to make the user stay in the middle of the field um so let's go ahead and set this up how we've been setting it up we're going to put the running back on a uh, curl route still and this is still going to work the same way we're still going to be able to hit b right there and the user if they are that linebacker is going to have to pick and choose do I want to stop the zig route or do I want to stop the inside route? So that's basically the little scheme that I like to run. You got that the run play. We got the space and play. And then sometimes we throw in um, the HB screen. And then also you do have mesh. But this is just like a concept where it's just two drag routes, which is one of the hardest things to stop in Madden when you have two drag routes. Uh, but we're going to jump into some gameplay and try to get this going against some real users. All right, this man low-key gave me hell getting downfield, sending these man blitzes. Uh, but... We're at where we need to be. Let's see if we can get this going for y'all. Again, we're going to be out of the gun bunch tight end. Um, using the Falcons, wanted to use a team that doesn't have the greatest wide receivers, um, but could definitely get some things done. It's like we're, in, we're going against a man coverage. That's okay. He, look, I bet you he's in man coverage still, but he's just basing his defense. Um, our, first, our first read is 100% going to be the zig route to the outside. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. That's what happens when you try to play man coverage, but base your defense is just going to completely mess up your man coverage. Um, but yeah, it's just simple zig route to the outside. No reason to overthink that against man coverage. But we're going to go ahead and just go for two, see if he tries to do that again. He's been favoring man coverage. Um, we're going to do it again. Look, again, he might be basing. We're going to do the same thing. This time we're going to look for the inside zig route. I didn't even get to set my play up the way I wanted to. Uh, but we are going to look for London right here. It's that easy. That easy. Yeah, he's got to get out of man coverage, though. I don't know what he's doing. Base man coverage, not a good setup. You can get burnt real easy. Seven yards out. See what we can do. We might go for that outside zig, honestly. We might go for the outside zig. Now, because I need seven yards, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put Y on a in route, smart routed, and the same thing with pits. And we're going to streak the running back. But I'm going to look for that outside zig route right here. Oh, but we got the inside one. Perfect. I'll take it. It works out. 
But we smart routed because we needed seven yards, and that hitch would have probably fell short. And I, if I, even if I caught it, would have probably got tackled. So that's just little adjustments that you got to make depending on how far you are from the end zone. I'm going to try to get some do uh, Dolphins. i going to try to get some Broncos gameplay for y'all. I haven't used the Broncos in a long time. I do got that Dolphins gameplay coming out, though. We are working on, oh, that's me. He had a wide open touchdown. Um, oh, yeah, user strip. Oh, we didn't get it, though. That's all good. But yeah, I haven't used the Broncos in a minute. Um, so I wanted to get some Broncos gameplay on top of the video that we're doing with this red zone um, offense. But uh, again, like I said, we do have, um, we are working on, what you call it, the gameplay for the Dolphins. I know one of y'all was asking me about that. Give me that. Baited it. Baited it. Oh, oh my. That's a clip. I wasn't going to score, but I think we got to. That's a clip. Give it to him. <laughs> Good thing is we can still go for the goal line or uh, the red zone play because we can go for the two. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, that was not something I wanted to do, but I had to get the clip for that. Let's get these uh, audible set up. I do like the mash. Where's mash? I show y'all how we run mash too, but all right, this is possible man coverage. This is possible man coverage, so we can still run. I'm gonna have time. Can we motion out. We gonna have time to motion. Probably not. That's all right. Let's call timeout. Call timeout. Make it easy on ourselves. And it doesn't matter if you run this to the weak side or the uh, the heavy side or the weak side or the heavy side, the short side or the wide side. Uh, you can still get this done. It is better when you have more room, but I can still get it done like this. Now, I'm actually going to leave the running back on the route that he's on. That route can be good against man coverage, especially if the user is supposed to be guarding it. So we're going to leave the tight end on his route, and we're going to leave the running back on that. It's like a, it's like the quickest flat route um, available. But first read is still going to be X right there. Like We might be able to hit the running back. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's real quick. And you are going to have to, you know, deal with getting tackled like that. So just try to possession catch it. Um, but every time they're in man coverage, if I see it, I definitely take that route and I try to go with it. Hey, why didn't y'all tell me I didn't score on that pick the whole time I thought I was going for the two-point conversion? <laughs> My dumb ass was actually on uh, an actual down. I thought that was a two-point conversion the whole time. It didn't even hit me. Like, and I had to go for it twice, I think. Man, I tell you what. That's crazy. This whole time, I thought I scored. Why y'all didn't say nothing? Perfect. Perfect zone drop. Perfect zone drop. 25. All right, looks like this man is playing just a man blitz with no safety help over the top. We're either going to go for Palmer or we're going to go for Godwin. Goodwin. Godwin. Bad one. That's a speed difference. That's a speed difference. All right. Got to get out of bounds. Got to get y'all the footage. Got to get y'all the footage. All right. Let's. Okay. Mike Evans is there. Okay. Perfect. We got our stuff set up already. Mash. And then our screen pass. All right. He's probably still running his cover or his man coverage, or he's probably in, um, you know what? We're going to go for the RPO right here. This defense isn't the greatest against run. I mean, he can stop it if you blitz, but we'll take it right up the middle. Nickel double mub. Nickel double mub. <laughs> Nickel double mug is not a good run stop defense at all. Like, there's no reason you should be running that in the red zone. I mean, I kind of got lucky right there. We just kind of jurtled in, but overall, it's just not a good defense to stop the run.